All right. I think that our next guest is eh, he's pretty much the social media voice of baseball. So I always like to get to pick his brain, but he's definitely the voice of Red Sox fandom. So perfect guy to have on to do uh, the Jared Sollinger test. It's Jared Carabas of the Baseball is Dead podcast. What's up, brother? What's going on? How are you? We're, we're, uh, we'll, we'll get there. <laughs> you know, like, we'll see. We'll see. I, so, I, I'm, a little di- I'm a little disheartened by some of the Toronto uh, reaction yeah. to Justin Turner okay. yesterday. All right. So let me start by saying this. So I, I do something called the Jared Sollinger test. And it's a, I, I don't know how closely you follow basketball, but it was a Boston related thing. Jared Sollinger comes from the Celtics. He comes to the Raptors and Raptors media is going, Oh, this guy. And when he was in college and if he can stay healthy and his skill set and blah, 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 blah. And then every Celtics fan that you talked to was like good riddance. Thank God he's mm. on your team. Thank God you've taken him. It's very clear that from your initial reaction there, that this guy very much passes the Jared Sollinger test from a positive standpoint that like the opposing fan base that is losing him loved the player. I think if you're talking about Justin Turner, and and, try, and and listen, I was in the same boat as you are right now a year ago yeah. because, I, but it was it was kind of it was a little bit different in that sense because now we're talking about Kenley Jansen coming over Justin Turner, and then you just brought over Kike Hernandez the year before. You're like, are we just like picking up Dodgers, Dodgers castoffs? Yeah. yeah, yeah, like that was like a weird part of it with the whole Turner thing where it's like. I get that you're beloved, but you're a Dodger. Like, I, I feel like we can't embrace you the way that, uh, especially considering the age, when you're in your, when you're in your later 30s uh, and you've, spent your, you, you've made your, your name for yourself with another organization and there's no way that you can have, like, this new chapter here because there's just not much time left on your baseball clock. Mm-hmm. I was a little skeptical. But then you... you you talk to the guy, you see him play, you see him show up day in and day out. You see what others say about him. And what you'll also see is that he won't be far from whatever manager he plays for in the dugout. Like, I feel like that is just such a obvious candidate for a future big league manager and Justin Turner, like even at this point in his career, absolute sponge maybe that's why he's coming here maybe that was ultimately his decision he was like you know what um if this thing goes poorly schneider's gone and i can just slide right in to a brand new job here in toronto i can i can pull i can pull this off okay so uh, when you said let me defend toronto a little bit when you said the hey i'm surprised by the reaction um We've gone through that too, where someone's just a, Hey, they're a Dodger or they're, they, they're just a member of a different organization. We did this just last year because the Jays signed Kiermaier and he was actually a bit of a villain here, right? He was someone that robbed mm. a, a countless amounts of hits from Toronto Blue Jays players. He had gotten into it with a couple of different guys. He had this moment where he slid into home and whatever the, the, the catcher call sheet thing is, I don't know. He grabbed it and brought it to his dugout and that caused a little kerfuffle and people went, wow, this guy's a bit of a cheater, huh? This guy's a bit of a shady character. He comes to Toronto and people love him immediately. But why? Because he's a, he's a ball player. And I hate being this kind of cliche speaker, but that is, those guys resonate wherever the hell they go. And it's very clear Justin Turner is that as well, right? Ball player, guy that loves the game, loves to be around it, is going to be great with teammates, is going to give you a good AB, takes a bunch of pitches, right? You're never going to feel cheated by this guy. That's all great. In a vacuum, he would be an awesome signing for the Toronto Blue Jays. The problem is, is that they're signing a basically a 40-year-old guy to be their DH in an offseason where we thought maybe we were going to get Shohei Otani, and it was being promised about splash, splash, splash. And now the entire premise of this Blue Jays team is, hey, I know we didn't hit last year. We were one of the most awful teams to watch offensively in baseball. But now uh, Isaiah Kiner-Falefa and Justin Turner replacing Matt Chapman and Brandon Belt. Don't worry. That's going to help really turn things around offensively. That's what I think people's reaction is, not Turner in a vacuum. Yeah, no, I, I get that. <clears throat> and, I, and I think also when you look at the Turner signing, you see it's for one year, you see how old he is. Yeah. It's not a long-term solution. I think when you're a baseball fan, especially if you're a Toronto Blue Jays fan, you're looking at our window opened several years ago now. Like we're, we're in the middle to like the latter half of our window. And instead of kind of prolonging it, Kind of like what the Houston Astros did. I know, you know, everyone feels a certain type of way about Houston, but it's like they called up guys 
and then their pipeline continued, and then they supplemented that with free agents and trades when they had to. Uh, so in, in addition to the cheating, like you could look at it on the surface and say, you know, they kind of did this in like a very Dodger way, whereas the Blue Jays, you know, you had your first wave of call-ups. Some of them hit, some of them missed. Some of them hit and then missed, and we're hoping that they'll hit again. I think we all know who I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. Uh, congrats on the cover. But mm-hmm. it's, I think it's more so that you need that next wave like to get the fans excited because this first wave that everyone was really, really excited about, well, what became of it? What postseason run could you look back on and be like, it was all worth it? All the hype led to this. Like, it's not even like they knocked on the door of a world. They got series. no wins, Bob. So, they got no wins. There's right. no run. There's no right. wins, period. There's not a win. Right. We'll take a win. Right. That's what we'll, that's the bar right now is, hey, Vladimir Bolt, win a game there. And that and right. then people will be like, okay, that's a start. That's something. Yeah. No, I, I, I'm totally with you. I see it. And I'm frustrated, too, because, I, I mean, I love me some Bo Bichette and some Vladdy. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, even like a guy like Kevin Biggio was someone that you were excited about, you know, four or five years ago. Mm-hmm. But... I, yeah, I the whole Justin Turner thing. I know it. It kind of. It, it's not necessarily pandering. Uh, it may sound like sugarcoating, but you have to factor in guys that are kind of on the fringe are going to get better just by seeing how this guy goes about his business. It, you cannot understate the value of having a guy who's been there and done that, and it, it can also change the culture. And I hate to keep using the Astros as an example, but 2016, a lot of those guys that ended up being stars that were homegrown talent, they didn't really take that next step forward until uh, they injected some veterans over there like, uh, like Beltran. We all know what he was responsible for, but, you know, a Hall of Famer in my opinion. Um, McCann, Reddick, like that's when that group kind of took that next step forward. And a lot of these young Jays, they're not – young Jays anymore. Like you can make the case like, yeah, these are kind of, they're stepping into like veteran status. Uh, Maybe not grizzled vet, but they're not young pups anymore. But a guy like Justin Turner, he's been there. He's won a world series. He's played in multiple. Uh, That stuff makes a difference, especially when you look around the clubhouse and you don't have guys that have been there and done that. It helps to be alongside those guys. No, I completely agree. And this is why I wanted to have you on is so that you would make me feel better about this <laughs> and that you would remind me that to me intangibles matter and having those vets around that matters. And that's all good. And, you know, Boba Shed actually was on uh, one of the podcasts on our network a week ago with our guys, Blair and Barker. And he said that exact thing where he says, we're not young anymore. We, we can't be treated like we're just a bunch of upstarts. It's just like, it's, it's now, this is now our primes. The only issue I have with that, where you're like, oh, he's been there before and you bring in a guy, he's good for the cause. It's like, that's exactly what everybody said about Brandon Belt, and they still won no playoff games. Like that yeah, was. Yeah, I mean, it, like, was, you look at like the Brandon Red Sox Belt, last year. The giraffe. He's comedy. He's got World Series experience. He's a clubhouse guy. He's around the manager. Like all those things, we could have just played mm-hmm. this and gone. Wait, you know, when they do those tweets, it's like player A, player B. It's like this could have been the exact same thing with Justin Turner and Brandon Belt. No, I, I I agree that intangibles will only get you so far because you're talking about a Justin Turner that just came from Boston, a team that finished in last place. But you look at the season that he just had. Dude was 38 years old and still posted an 800 OPS. Yeah, like you're not just you're not just saying like, oh, uh, we're gonna have this veteran hobble himself into the clubhouse no. and he's just gonna bestow his wisdom on the youth. Like, yeah, no, he he is gonna do that. But in addition to that, he's going to have a 114 OPS plus. He's going to hit over 20 homers. He almost drove in 100 runs last year. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, like, you're, you're getting a guy. Like, I, I get it's, it's hard to be excited about a guy that walks into the clubhouse in his age 39 season. That On the surface, that doesn't sound great. Oh, we, we just signed a, a dude uh, in his age 39 season uh, to a one-year deal. whoop de doo all right, yeah, but he brings with him the ability to, to pump 20 homers, drive in 100 runs, and have an OPS of 800. He's going to get on base at like a 350 clip. I mean, like, his OPS last year was 345, which is great. Yeah. It's his lowest mark since 2016. Mm. Like, he gets on base. He hits the ball hard. Like, you're getting a good right-handed bat, and then the intangibles are kind of just the icing on the cake. Like, I would be frustrated, too, if 
my team was trying to sell me on a, on a one-year deal for a guy that was just strictly intangibles. Mm-hmm. I don't know what Jays fans aren't seeing when they look at the season that he just put up, or they just look at the last, I don't know, seven years of his career where mm-hmm. he's just a high batting average guy, he's a high on base guy, and he can hit the ball hard. He's going to drive in runs. He's going to hit doubles and homers. Like, what else could you ask? For? No, it, that's it. It's it, l- Listen, again, I love the Turner signing. I think that it's completely fine. I think it's a good one. Uh, I think everyone is going to see the stuff that you're talking about. And even when I was talk, making the Brandon Belt comparison, the one difference is Brandon Belt was coming here as, well, maybe. And it worked out pretty well, but he missed a chunk of time. Justin Turner plays games. He's played well throughout his late thirties. And so, yeah, just you're, when you're talking about the floor of this player, I feel like it's so much higher than what they were doing last year with belt. All of that stuff is awesome. It's the fact that on this team, him, a guy with an 800 OPS, who's only going to hit 20 bombs is the DH, right? It felt like the the piece that they needed was more of a, Hey, this guy could actually like a, a massive lottery ticket, like Solaire, where you go, actually, this guy could hit 40 bombs versus a guy who could mm-hmm. hit 20. And so I think there was a little bit of shock within the market going from, hey, it could be Shohei, hey, it could be Bellinger, to, hey, your big offseason signing is Turner. If they had done a bigger move and added Turner as like the, the, the luxury piece to this, it's a very different story or it's a very different tune from the fan base other than having him be like the premier move of the offseason, you know? Like he's the no, top I, guy. I completely the get other that. guy is Isaiah Conner Falefa, who's going to play third base apparently every day for this team that's trying to win a World Series. Like I, I don't, I don't understand how that is supposed to make you feel good. No, I, I'm with you there, and I think it comes off of the fact that you know we got teased with the flight thing with yeah, Shohei. Exactly, exactly. Uh, it's the context. The Jays of it. were in the rumors on Soto. Oof. Like the the tease was high. Mm-hmm. Like if you're coming in with, hey, we're in the we're in the uh, Otani sweepstakes and you, you to the point where we've got reports of press conferences being planned. Like, yeah, I can absolutely level with that. Yeah. But that was also at this point, what, two months ago, we yeah. had time to kind of come down from that. Uh, and, and again, like I would also be upset if it's you need the broader picture like we've been talking about. Yeah. It's not just that expectation expectations were high this off season specifically. It's the fact that expectations have been high since this core made it to the big leagues and they've kind of just been scratching the surface, knocking on the door of just getting into the postseason and winning a single postseason game um for now what, three, four years? Mm-hmm. So I get it. I get the frustration, but Justin Turner should not be the target of your aggression, Jays he fans. Trust me, you're going to love this guy. No, he's he's going to be loved. I, I listen. I, if there's one thing I know, it's the fans in the city, and I, I can tell you, I he would have to be a disaster for people not to love him. The bar for his success is going to be pretty low. Like the ire is going to absolutely be directed, like primarily, honestly, at Vladdy. That's the guy who. Like Bo, people feel like we know what we're going to get from Bo. You, you know, he's going to post essentially the same stats year in, year out. He's going to bring that professionalism with Vladdy. It's the, Hey, is he working enough? Does he care enough? Is he, you know, was he great? Is he great? It's all this different stuff. And like, I think you actually saw that with his, he had a quote, uh, I think it was yesterday or was it two days ago where he said that this is going to be his year. This is going to be his season. Mm-hmm. And some of it was eye rolling because people go, man, he said this year is going to be the movie or the last year was the trailer. This year's the movie when it came mm-hmm. to uh, at one of the most crushing blue Jays losses ever, which was to Seattle in a, a year where Vladdy. Yeah. Was not nearly, you know, he was he runner up for MVP to Shohei Otani. And then the following season, he OPS 818 last year was 788. I taught last time I talked to you about Vladdy, you made me feel better because he hit a home run that very same night you came on and then he crushed one. And that was perfect. Where are you at just in terms of your Vladdy stock right now? I'm assuming that you're a hold, but yeah, where's your level of optimism that like, it's actually going to be his year that we are going to see the MVP 2.0 or something close to that season. So kind of where I fall on Vladdy is I, I don't want to believe that 2021 was, the peak, he no was 22 years old. I know. Like he, he was 22 years old. There is so much black ink on that season. Led the league in runs, led the league in homers, led the league in on base, 
led the league in slugging, OPS, OPS plus, total bases across the board. Like, he was a superstar. Where I kind of fall on Vladdy now is, I mean, we're going into our age 25 season this year. I think he should take a break from making predictions. I feel like he's not a predictions kind of guy. No. I think he needs to get to that point in his career where he's just like, all right, head down, get to work. Let my let my uh, my numbers do the talking for me. That's where I think he needs to be. I don't think that I, – I, I want to say I don't think we've seen the best of Laddie. Maybe he doesn't get to 2021, but is he better than what he's been the last two years? Yeah. Yeah, I don't think he – like the fact that he had an OPS in the 700s last year in his age 24 season, like these are the prime years of his career. Uh, these are the prime years of his life as an athlete. So no, I, I think, I don't think this is just what it's going to be. I don't think that this is what we need to get used to. Uh, if the bar is 2021, yeah, I, I still think to some degree that's reachable. Maybe it's not 48 bombs. Maybe it's not an OPS over a thousand, but this is a guy that should routinely have an OPS in the 900, mm. whether it be on the lower end, fine. But that 2021 season is the only year that he's had an OPS uh, of 900 or better. Every other year we're talking 800 or lower. Mm-hmm. So he needs to be better. We, the fact that he showed us that that's in there. Now it's just a matter of unlocking it. You cannot fluke, and he played 161 games that year, by the way. Mm-hmm. You cannot fluke a full season of that kind of damage. You can't fluke it. You're either that guy or you're not. Uh, so it's in there, and he's still well young enough to be able to get close to that again. Uh, if, it's, if that's it, if that's the best season that we've ever seen from him, fine. But it needs to be, has to be, and can be better than it has been the last two years. I wish we had a little bit more time today. We got to go, but I will say the thing that actually made me feel the best though, was seeing that, you know, you're like, Oh, why are blue Jays fans reacting this way to Justin Turner? It was also true seeing you and Red Sox fans react that way to losing Justin Turner, where it's like you guys fired Heim Bloom and it was, Hey, it's time. The Red Sox are back. And now it's like, what are they doing? Like where, what, what is, what is the plan? It's really awful. Yeah. It's like to see that really awful. brand and that team in this American League East where everyone's trying to take a step forward except you guys, where it's like, I genuinely don't know what the what the Red Sox are doing. I was like, that was a pretty fascinating point to me was, yeah, Justin Turner, ire for some Blue Jays fans in terms of where they're at. Justin Turner, also ire for Red Sox fans knowing also where you're at. Um, so thanks. That is, that is a great barometer. That yeah. is a great barometer. Always look at the other fan base that's losing the player. Dude, it's, it's the best one. Honestly, it's, all, it's one of the best <laughs> things that you can do. It's way more trustworthy than, you know, the, the writer that's going to tell you. No, it's, it's the fan base. It's the people that watch them day in, day out. And we're super passionate about it. Uh, like you were. Hey, man, uh, thanks as always for making time. Absolutely. It was great talking to you. Take care, pal. Uh, Jared Kravis of the Baseball is Dead podcast.